Welcome to 5x5. Five five. Today is the 100th episode of 5x5. Five five. Now, strictly speaking, that doesn't really mean a lot because uh, when I started 5x5, five five, it was a daily thing. Uh, five days a week, five minutes a day, five days a week, which is partly where the 5x5 five five came from. The other thing is 5x5 five five is radio terminology for loud and clear. Okay, quality. And anyway, we did, we did all that like over a year ago. Um, so yeah, and of course, occasionally, just like in the last few weeks particularly, I've missed one. Even after I swapped over to doing it just once a week, I've missed one every now and again. Sorry, this is a bit wonky. Well, it looks a bit wonky. Maybe it was perfectly straight and I've just wonkied it. I don't know. Um, but you know, there's, so there's no timer today, just for this episode, no timer, no five minute timer, so I'm going to try to keep this fairly brief, but it will be longer than the regular five by fives. Um, you know, so strictly speaking, that number doesn't, it's just the number, it doesn't mean anything, but since it's the 100th episode of five by five, I thought we'd do something a little bit different. Um, and I thought that what I would do, because um, I realised the last 5x5 five five that I actually made, we were talking about stuff like um, like, like this thing here, you know, that, which, you know, appeared in the, in the little prison sequence in the, um, in the film that I made, which was like a, it was a parody of a MasterCard commercial that was about a time and, you know, little lightsabers in it and stuff like that. And I just thought it'd be fun. Um, <laughs> but I thought, I, I actually, I got a bit nostalgic looking through all that stuff, so I thought I, we'd look at some other stuff that I've built over the years, over time, that's sort of been introduced into other things. The reason I get a bit nostalgic about this is because I started on YouTube in 2007 as, you know, it was a way for me to make sort of short films. You know, because I love doing the video game channel, it's fantastic, I love every minute of it, especially the editing. Um, but I'm a storyteller at heart, you know, I write and, 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 you know, I like to tell stories in any way that I can. And I love movies. That's my first love. You know, I love film and I love making short films and just playing about and tweaking things and figuring problems out as you go. So that's what this channel started as. And 5x5 five five is kind of a placeholder in the hope that I can get back to that somehow, as well as hopefully publicising the novel or the first novel um, at some point. So, you know, we'll see. Um... So, I mean, you know, I thought we'd delve about it. I mean, you know, there's basic stuff. There's, there's my old, old lighting rigs. I have a slightly better lighting rig now, but not a lot better. But it is at least a proper lighting rig. Um, but these I used to use for all sorts of things when I lit the... Um, this is the moon, right? So this is one of those moon in my room things. You hang it up on the wall and it lights up the phases of the moon. <clears throat> but I put this on a green table and used it for like an animated... <laughs> Just a very brief animated sequence. When I say animated, I mean, <laughs> well, animated. You know, I just photographed this and then removed the green background and animated a little cardboard thing cut out in the computer. Uh, you'll see. I'll throw that in there. That was in the Apollo 13 thing. So, uh, you know, it's amazing what you can find to use. I love solving these little problems like that. Um, it's great. Um, this is a thing, I don't think this ever actually made it into any of the films. It was supposed to originally, but this is something I made uh, a long time ago out of, you know, air gun, you know, air gun bits. Just some sort of random space blaster prop thing. <clears throat> this, I don't know if you're going to be able to see this because um, the, <laughs> the, the focus on this doesn't work. The autofocus drives me bananas and the selfie focus doesn't work at all. So I can't see really what you're seeing now. Uh, you certainly won't be able to read this from there. There you go. Megalomaniacal. Or megalomaniacal, yes. Megalomaniacal. It's basically my own... I came up with... This is my drug that I invented as a way of, way of curing Richard's megalomania. Cinera uh, Biotech. Cinera Biotech was the same company that made... The Nomad is a company that I um, invented, Cinera Biotech, um, <laughs> and it's a company that made the Nomad capsules as well. And we were actually going to make a whole film about Cinera Biotech. We're going to be one of the evil corporations. That we saw. And it says here, warning, side effects may include beards. So, yeah, I don't really know why why I put, uh, put that in, but uh, 
Well, it's going to be a whole thing about it, but uh, here we go. We've got, I'll show you these close up as well. Right, now these are broken a little, but what it was is welding goggles, and they were blue to start with these. Oops. You see, look, all the bits are now starting to come off and unscrew and come loose. So all one sort of reattaching and refastening, but these were basically, you know, every they were for a mad they were for a mad time traveller called Artemis Lime. Give him a round of applause, hey. he's been here all week. <laughs> For your amusement. Come in. Oh my god. You may now. He gave him sight! <laughs> and I came up with these. I love, one of the things I really love the most about making films is making props. So, so what we did, they were for, we took these blue welding goggles with the flip up thing here. Right? And we used, you can probably see that's the inside of a uh, I think that's the inside of a hard drive player, hard, a disc drive, it's the inside of it, it's the drive plate from a disc drive, I think, or a CD with, a, you know, uh, and then, you know, little arms of, I don't really know what, you know, they look more impressive from a distance. <clears throat> but basically, I just thought, well, you know, every mad time travel has these silly welding goggle things, I got to make mine look a little bit more interesting, like they do stuff. So, you know, this, these were various lenses that you could turn and, and things like this. It's just the kind of stuff. I always just make this, you know, I don't... I mean, obviously I bought the goggles, the, the goggles, but the rest of the stuff... Most of the time when I make these things, it's just junk that I have lying around, generally. I showed you the little lightsaber prop box that I had there um, last week. And that's basically where most of it comes from. That's where I keep these little bits of metal junk that I think will probably come in handy at some point. Um, but yeah, that's, this is what I come up with. Now this, this is one of the earliest sort of lightsabers I made. I made this one because this one was supposed to screw this end. I don't know if it will now. It probably won't. It probably won't unscrew. I can't even remember how I put it together so that it did Oh, it does unscrew. And I removed, like, I think I put some glue in there. But I did this, I made this one with a removable end so that you could show the electronics that I just, you know, that wouldn't, didn't, the electronics in it didn't make any sense. I just put a few wires in to show me putting it together in one of the old scenes. So that's one of the earliest ones I made. I'm not very impressed with that one, but this was, you know, um, we were, I, there was a time, as you can probably tell by now, when I was really obsessed by doing lightsaber effects because it's one of the earliest movie effects that I was really impressed with that I learned how to do years and years and years ago, rotoscoping. Um, but, you know, some of them are not bad. This one, I don't think this is bad, really, considering that I built it from um, junk that I had in the garage, uh, you know, that I had in my little box there. Look, you know, the rubber thing's coming off now, but... Yeah, I just, you know, I made it out of junk to reasonably approximate the sort of sabres that you've seen Anakin Skywalker have and stuff like that. So I built it out of junk. But the point of these were they weren't supposed to just look pretty in the hand. Well, when you're rotoscoping a lightsaber, you need a prop blade. Okay? Something, a reference that you can rotoscope over so that when you when people wave it around and thing, you can follow it and just draw over it with the lightsaber effect again and again and again and again. Frame by frame by frame. Yes, we've done that. That's why most of those are quite short. But in order to do that, you need the reference blade. But I also want to, I wanted something that you could show because most of them, they have different things. Like I think the, I, did, I used to have a wooden one, there, but they usually make molds of the things that they make and then just paint them roughly you know, to put prop blades and things like that in. But I wanted to use the same one, the same hilt, for close-ups. So I'll show you this relatively close-up. It doesn't look quite, like most things, it doesn't look quite as impressive close-up. But, you know, I mean, considering that I made this out of junk, like this is, this is the aluminium shaft from, I think, a scooter, and then there's a clip, which I put on here, like that. Um, you know, and then these little bits that I attached. I made 
I didn't have a solid brass chunk, but I had little bits, so I slowly sort of covered it together. And initially that was polished, like really, really highly polished there, and it was all glued together, but over time it's just come apart. Okay, and then I just glued these little bits on and put a little thing on the bottom. It's, you know, when you see them up close, it's not all that impressive. This is just, I think this is just a hose attachment, hose pipe attachment, which I just wrapped some, I wrapped some copper wire around to make it look a bit more interesting, and then I just shaped the the thing here so you know that's what we do but um it was so basically this was made to resemble the graflex um type saber which were the the ones from the original star wars movie which vader had and i think uh luke had um which were basically made from graflex flash guns old graflex flash units for cameras you know the big ones that you see them in like old like 50s 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 movies and stuff like that they're the camera and then they hold the big flash unit the, uh, and they were made out of Graflex flash units. Um, so they call that the Graflex saber, then that's why. But um, mine, I wanted for the hilt to be the same one that you use. I don't want to make a separate one for fighting. So what I did was I made sure that inside all mine, I have a little screw thing there, and I made prop blades like this. It's aluminium, these ones, not great, but worked. And then you slot it in, you can hear that little click. Uh, and then I would screw that to there. And there you have it, you see, then you have a prop blade. Mm -hmm. You have a prop reference blade, and then I covered it in like high visibility, which is here. So it's faded, as you can probably see quite a lot over the years. So I covered it in high vis tape to make it easier to see in the middle of like a fast, particularly back then when I had a really, really poor camera. But then you just unscrew the thing and it comes back out and it's the hilt with the saber shut down again. So, you know. It's all great. It's all fun. I used to love making these things. I still love making little props. It's one of my favourite things. This... <laughs> this was a very, very hastily made prop. A very hastily made prop. Basically, when we made the Lord of the Rings um, done in 60 seconds film... It will kill us all! Are you alright, man? Hell did can't I just Melt it. by myself? No. You shall. <laughs> we initially made it. One of our cast members, Anki's brother, um, and sister-in-law, came along, and they brought their their little one. And we were gonna, he was gonna be Gollum, basically, in this. So he was gonna be Gollum in the in the one shot, which is not, you know, but this wasn't my idea. I hasten to it, it was not my idea to use my little nephew to be Gollum. It wasn't my idea, but I can't remember if it was Anki's or theirs, but it sure as well wasn't mine. I would never dare suggest something like that. But but we filmed it like that, and then we realized when I looked more closely at the um at the terms and conditions of entering the competition, which I've done a few times now, um, we realised that you couldn't put, you know, you couldn't have small children in these films. Uh, and this was coming right up on the deadline, so I had to hastily make a whole new scene with a golem. So I thought, well, it's just a silly thing. So basically, we took an old sock that I don't even remember where it was. We took an old sock and I drew, I drew this little golem face on it, which is why it looks like crap. Right, and my wife, she used to do, um, my wife, when she was a lot younger, when she was a teenager, she used to do LARP, uh, live action role play, and she had these old, like, elven ears that she just never used, and they were in the thing there. So then, and then we put some cotton threads, some really strong cotton thread, some wispy sort of hair here, and then what we did was I got a, I got a, I mean, you can see it in the thing, I got a, I had to put my head right. My bite inside it like that, you see. But there you go. That was my, that was my golem prop. Very hastily made in like a couple of hours. We made this and then decided to go film. So. Okay, this is odd because this actually used to be. It used to be completely closed up, and it used to be like an egg shaped mini refrigerator for a bedroom right you can see the little clump there 
And many years ago, I conceived the idea of a show called Pod 5. Um, because I wanted a show that I, I really struggled to get people to help me. I still do. I'm not a particularly sociable person, and no one ever really wants to help me with these things. I thought people would be really on board with it, but most of the time, no. Um, so it was really, I always really struggled to get people to help me and to organize it all, to come and be in the stuff that I made, the films that I made. So I conceived the idea of a show that I could do by myself. Uh, with just me in it, which was basically all set in one little, just a bit like a beefed up escape pod that you could survive in for a long period of time. That was accidentally, you know, it's it's a long story, but it, it's I'm not going to go into what it was all about. I really, really hope still to make it someday. I doubt whether it'll ever happen, but you know, I hold out hope. Um, so what I initially did was I made, I got this. And this was going to be the pod. This was going to be pod five. So you can see what I mean when I say it was a beefed up pod, because here is the little the cockpit window that I cut out. Uh, and obviously you can see this is not finished. I never finished it. Um, but, but I was attempting to sort of, can you, I don't know if you can probably see here if I come and zoom in. You can probably see. So you can, you can probably tell. You see where I've drawn on it here to make little uh, cuts? and to put little circles like docking rings and stuff like that. And I started, that's as far as I got, I started basically kit bashing, um, which I don't know if any of you know what kit bashing is. Um, it's basically when you take um, existing models and bits of things, you know, little plastic things and bits of old, old model kits, and you just take bits out of them and you put, uh, you put them together to make new things completely new that were nothing to do with the original thing that was, that was that on the box um so you get lots and lots of kits and you put them together and that's how all the original star wars uh vehicles were made in the original um star wars trilogy all the vehicles in that uh, and many of course miniatures in lots of other shows were made by kit matching you know they took lot of, lots and little bits of other model kits and they just stuck them together like that like the uh, mon calamari cruisers in uh, Return of the Jedi, for example, were made using, um, there were lots of submarine, they took lots of submarine hulls and they sort of glued them all together onto the onto a big plastic, a large plastic form and put submarine hulls on the outside. That's why they have that bubbly kind of, you know, model submarines. So this was going to be, you know, I thought, oh, you know, we've got all sorts of this. So this was going to be Pod 5. But what happened, why it never became Pod 5 in the end, was that I discovered... As normally happens, I get carried away with these things and what becomes a, what's a simple idea gets bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. And I, I get over ambitious with it. And I then I feel like I need to make sure it's perfect in every way. And unfortunately, that means that most of these things don't get completed. So, you know, that's what happened to that. But one of the things that happened was that I discovered that I could make it out of 3D elements. So I, I discovered Google SketchUp and a way to import models that I made in Google SketchUp into um, 3D program. I had iClone, 3D program I had at the time to light them better and stuff like that. Um, but you know, it, it took so much of my time. Um, it sticks in my memory because when Amki and I met online, like long, we met through our respective blog posts. Um, that we were both writing at the time. And when we met, I remember when we first started talking, that's what I was doing, was not creating, I've created, partially created the outside of Pod 5 in SketchUp, which if I can find it, I'll show you, I'll put it on the thing. But then I went crazy on the inside, but oh no, that wasn't Pod 5 actually, that was for another show, The Observers. Um, I, so I created a ship for them, which I'll put on the screen if I can find, I'm sure I can find that. And then I created the interiors, all completely 3D environments. And I went mental as, you know, if I'm putting these images on screen now, you'll be able to see, I went absolutely crackers. I, I, I drew every single tiny little button in the most ridiculous minute detail in areas of the ship that you would never, ever be able to see that you would only ever see from so far away, in some cases that even be around the corner, so you'd not be able to see them at all. Um, but I drew them in such detail, you would only be able to see some of these things from so far away, you wouldn't be able to make out the button, let alone the fact that the button says something underneath 
and the fact that I didn't just put random alien language, I translated it so they all actually do say specific things. And the flight console that I designed, I've always been interested in flying, so it had to make sense in my head. So there had to be all the different controls and everything there. So every control, it's not random controls on the, the, on the units there. Every single button on there has a purpose. And at one time, when I was designing it, I knew what they were all for. I could probably tell you more or less now, but I don't have that with me and I'll, you know. But yeah, that's every single button on that dash had a purpose. It had, you know, on the consoles there. They all did something. I knew what they all did and the whole thing made sense to me. But, you know, these are the, this is the amount of time that I've spent on projects that I've never seen the light of day. And I think what it is that people that don't know me think that I don't spend much time doing it. And I've spent so much more time behind the scenes doing things that just never saw the light of day. And it's, you know, but I love it. That's why, you know, I really want to keep this channel open and keep it going. And, and hopefully one day, you know, we'll make things, you know, we're not going to make a, probably never going to make a feature length movie or anything like that. You know, I'm, I'm not getting any younger <laughs> And I don't think that's ever going to happen, but, you know, little short films and things like that that we can do a little bit better than I did them before. That's what I really, really, really want to get back to. Really unpleasant noises, some kid screaming about something over there. I don't know what that is, but there we go. I've taken up far too much of your time, so I am going to leave you now. Uh, and we'll see you next time with, with episode 101, when it will be back to five minutes on a timer. That I can promise you, but until then, I'll see you.